we believe in the future of the Hunter region. A green hydrogen powerhouse. We have so much to offer here in the Hunter. The powerhouse of our nation. Less than three weeks until polling day. This is the Sky News Hunter Debate. Now your host, Laura James. Well, welcome to cold country. Well, at least where cold country meets wine country, and that is why this seat of the Hunter is on a margin of just 3%. There are competing interests here, and this is a seat that is at the forefront of that climate change debate, because who pays for change? It is seats like the Hunter Valley. So that's why we have three red-hot candidates who have a red-hot chance at this election. Let's head in and meet our candidates. We've got James Thompson, the Nationals candidate, uh, Dan Rapicoli, the Labor candidate, One Nation candidate, Dale McNamara. Welcome to all of you. These are the rules of the debate. They each have a 30-second opening statement. There are no prepared notes on these lecterns, and then we'll get into about 45 minutes of fierce debate. There's been a digital toss of the coin before we came to air today, and the 30 seconds kick off with Dale. Go for it. Good morning, um... Good afternoon, I'm Dale McNamara, the One Nation candidate for the Hunter. I'm standing today for the federal election, which is coming up soon on the 21st of May. And like many people in the Hunter, I'm really concerned about the net zero emission targets that these major parties here beside me are implementing for the Hunter. And I see dark times and bad times for the Hunter if we get net zero emissions in the Hunter. OK, James. Hi, I'm James Thompson, the Nationals candidate for Hunter. I live in the electorate and I currently work at a local school. I'm married to my amazing wife, Claire, and have two young children, Malia, who's two and a half, and Asher, my son, who's six months old, and they're both full of energy. And I believe the Hunter region has a great future. We have so many incredible industries here, which the Nationals support, and we've got a $1.3 billion regional package specifically for the Hunter because we support the 14,000 families that rely on mining and we also support our tourism, agriculture and manufacturing industries as well. Dan. Hi, I'm Dan Rapicoli and I'm a husband and a father to two beautiful girls. I'm not, I'm not a career politician. I'm a, I've been involved in mining, I've been involved in agriculture, I've been involved in engineering and manufacturing. I'm a three-time Commonwealth Games gold medalist and a five-time Olympian. I raised my family here in the Hunter, and the Hunter is home to wines, mines, horses and much, much more. I'm sick of what this government has done and let down this area. We give millions in royalties back to Canberra, and all we seem to get is cheap... We're not getting cheaper childcare. We're not getting medical we can get into very quickly. We're waiting weeks to get into doctors. An aged care that's in crisis, and not to mention our lack of skills, our lack of tastes, our lack of trades. Okay. That's why I'm standing for the Hunter. All right, let's get into the debate. I've some questions for all of you. Dan, first of all, Joel Fitzgibbon, he's not running at this election. That's why you're here. He was in this seat for 20 years. He was able to just hold on at the last election. He made a habit of going against his own party on climate change policy. And in many ways, that's why he was able to hang on. Will you do the same? So what I will do for this area is I'll make sure that we don't get left behind like we are with this current government. This government has forgotten about the hunter. There's no doubt about that. It is taking us weeks to get in to see doctors. Look at it, what we're doing with same job, same pay. There is people working in the mining industry here who are getting paid 50, 60 grand less than their counterparts for doing the same job. And these two guys next to me both voted in Parliament against the bill for same job, same pay. Labor will bring in same job, same pay because we care about the workers in the Hunter. We'll get to that, but you didn't answer my question. Are you Sorry? willing to go against your own party on climate policy? I'm willing to do whatever I need to do to make sure that we don't get left behind in the Hunter. All right. Uh, James, the Nationals say one thing in Queensland and another thing in the cities. Is this net zero target flexible or not? Well, the Nationals don't represent cities. We represent regional areas. And, uh, and Dan didn't answer the question before around Joel Fitzgibbon. Uh, Joel Fitzgibbon was a cabinet minister, you know, defence minister, agriculture minister. He was a front bencher. He was a chief government whip. And the Labor Party wouldn't listen to Joel Fitzgibbon. And if Joel Fitzgibbon couldn't trust Anthony Albanese or the Labor Party, how can we trust the Labor Party? Mm. We can't. They no longer represent 
the working class, the blue-collar workers, the National Party. We've got over 20 MPs whose sole focus is regional areas. We back <coughs> regional Australia, we back our industries, and we support families. That's what we do every day. We don't have to represent Balmain like the guy standing next to me. Sure, but your coalition partners so, do. So is it one thing in Queensland, one thing in the cities? Is the target flexible or not? Well, the coalition has one policy that we're united under. Right. And so it's not flexible? No, we have a policy and I support <coughs> that policy. OK. Dale, <coughs> let's go to you now. You've got the flavour of how things are going to yeah. go today. It's yeah, going to be I, quite can fiery. I, can I answer the question that you've asked both of these sure. guys? Can I actually tell you the truth? They have a zero emission policy. And the truth is that no matter what happens to these two guys here, they will not change what Mr Albanese is saying and what the Morrison, Barnaby Joyce government is saying. The truth to their question is, yes, they will have no change to what the policy that the hunter is going to be hit with. Well, what are you going to do about it? You can't what do I'm much going to either, do about it. If I'm elected, I'll be fighting against these zero emission targets for the coal mining jobs... The businesses in the Hunter, the businesses are in this street in Vincent Street, the businesses in John Street in Singleton, yeah. the Lake Macquarie businesses, because the Hunter coal industry goes right down, not just up to Musselbrook, it goes down to Lake Macquarie. We have my unit, my unit colliery that supplies the Araring power station. Now, if that Araring power station closes early because of their net zero emission targets, that is one coal mine gone. And many jobs many servicing jobs and many supporting jobs. Well, One Nation is also promising to build a new coal-fired power station. With 100%. whose money? Well, you need money. But, you know, if tomorrow, if they turned around and took these tax advantages away from these unreliables, I don't call them renewables, I call them unreliables, take away the tax advantages mm. of the unreliables and put the money where the rest of the world is putting... With whose money? So taxpayers' funds for taxpayers a new coal-fired power investment. station? and investment. So I'm sure if the coal mining industry had the subsidies that the unreliables are getting, we would, we would continue to improve our coal-fired power stations. We'd build the same coal-fired heli, H-E, heli, high-energy, low-emission power stations that Japan are building right now. So hmm. get behind our coal industry, okay. get behind our coal jobs, because if we don't, the Hunter will be a very sad place. All right, Dan, I think we need to sort something out there. And I know you want to launch in. Let's talk about the last couple of days. How many mines in the Hunter will be affected by Labor's safeguard mechanism? No mines will be affected in the Hunter by our safeguard mechanism. All we That's have to do is compete and be the same as what our counterparts are doing overseas. This, this, this was brought in by James Thompson's party back in 2016. This was brought in by Abbott. This was brought in by also Scott Morrison. He was Treasurer at the time. We have to do the exact same thing as what they're doing. You guys are the exact same safeguard measures in place. So none of no, these, that, none not, of these mines you, you in do. the Hunter hit over 100,000 tonnes? Sorry? Uh, none of these hines, uh, mines in the Hunter hit that threshold that would require them to buy carbon credits under the safeguard mechanism scheme? The safeguard mechanism scheme is designed that we are not disadvantaged against that's our counterparts over in that's overseas. That's not my question, though. That's OK. That's fine. I'm answering the question back, though. We are only having to do what we have to do with what our competitors are overseas, so that we are not disadvantaged here in our country to produce coal, have safe jobs and have jobs and safe families well, here. That's well, this, what we are doing. This is not what your climate representative said. This is Chris Bowen. Have a look. So, so yes, we will require the 215 emitters to reduce their emissions to net zero by 2050. So does and that, that, that is, then that is what the Business Council has sure. asked to happen. Does it include coal mines? Yes. It includes coal. Yes, and the Clean Energy Regulator will uh, work with each facility, each of the 215 facilities, and say, well, all right, what's the available technology that you can have to reduce emissions? And what, what are your competitors facing around the world? And what's a sensible pathway for you to net zero? And then the facilities, whether it be a coal mine or an aluminium smelter or any of the other facilities, mm. again, exactly the same, Chris, mm. same list, whether it's a Labor government or a Liberal government, we'll just implement it better, would, would we'll be able to decide how they reduce their emissions. Yes, Dan. Exactly what he said there, though, is that we are doing the same as what this current government is doing. We are doing the same. Workers will not be at risk underneath this policy. 
we will make sure of that. It doesn't add up, though. Either they pay under the safeguard mechanism or your net zero policy does not add up. Which yep. one is it? So, at the end of the day, we both have the same plan here. That's not right. Going forwards. We both do. What's your plan? Well, let me explain the Labor Party's policy, even though they can't explain it properly themselves. The safeguard mechanism that uh, is being referred to by Chris Bowen, ours is set at the roof level. It doesn't affect any existing businesses, and the Nationals have never and will never put a carbon tax on coal mining jobs. Under the Labor Party's policy, they've set their safeguard mechanism here, and there are 215 businesses in Australia that are affected, 15 mines here in the Hunter Valley, and 10,000 workers who work at those 15 mines. Not only that, to all the viewers watching at home, right across this country, the Labor Party's plan, there are two of our last oil refineries that will also be taxed under their plan. So, <laughs> under Labor Party's plan, uh, the cost of fuel's going to go up because those oil refineries have two right. choices. One, they can move overseas and take their workforce with them, or they can pass that cost on to the consumer. The Labor Party have a great big carbon tax. And, Dan, you need to be honest with the voters in Hunter of how they're going to be affected under your plan. I am plan. being honest, James, and they're not going to be affected under our plan. Our plan is the same as yours. So mines are included in, in, under your threshold? Mines are included in our whole plan. Every, every business, so those mines 215... Will be taxed. That, no, no, mines will not be taxed. Those 215 businesses include, are included in our plan that all we have to do is meet what our competitors are doing overseas. This is not a tax. Clear, you can say whatever you want here, James. This is not a tax. The clear difference between the Nationals and the Labor Party is that the Labor Party want to reduce emissions through taxing you. The Coalition are investing in technology. That's the difference. We, That's the big we, difference. we are investing in technology as well, James. What we are doing is we are going to make sure that we don't have the infighting like you guys do because we know we can get the net zero by 2050 because we have had the most biggest independent study done by any organisation that hasn't been involved within the government. So you're like saying you Chris guys. Bowen is wrong? That you, Chris you're... Bowen is saying what Chris Bowen is saying. That I'm you're saying going to what tax I know. I, we are not taxing coal Dan, mines. Dan, we're going around in what circles here. What we are here. doing is we're going to have to meet the same standards of what our competitors overseas are doing. Sure. That is what that plan says. He's saying one thing, Chris Bowen's saying one thing, you are saying another here. So what is the truth? What are voters who are looking at your name on the ballot box expected to think? I'm saying what I know the plan says, and that is all we need to do Mines is will not be affected. Mines will not be affected by this in our area, in the Hunter. Unless these they hit 10, the threshold 000, and then they 10, need to buy carbon credits. And in that's a levy. the working area here will be safe. Miners' jobs are safe here in this That's not the question, though. That's not, I'm not asking about jobs. I'm asking about the threshold and whether this uh, safeguard mechanism means that there will be a cost to mines. There is not a tax happening for the mine I'm not asking about a tax. That's his words. Yep. I'm asking about a cost. Let's call it a levy. Yep. Will there be a levy? They are included in the 215 people safeguarded, businesses safeguarded underneath this policy. As I said, this policy is just the same as their policy that it got introduced by Tony Abbott and Scott Morrison. All right, well, let's see what uh, some of your but, constituents yeah. have to say. We'll come back to you. Uh, it would certainly be how they're going to make sure that whatever the promises they make, they are going to be shared across the regions and making sure that they aren't just metro-focused. What they're going to do to replace the coal-fired power stations because in every other country and in South Australia and Queensland have had brownouts because... Renewables just don't seem to work, especially in winter. How, how are you going to invest into the economy after the, sort of, after the coal mines start shutting down and stuff? Because I think um, there's, there's definitely a lot of, especially from the Labor side of things, they want, um, you know, it's, it's still concentrating on the mining sector and stuff like that. And I think, you know, what's going to, what's going to happen after that goes. There you have it. <coughs> so... Dale, to save my voice, what do you think? I mean, this is where the debate's headed. We can't really get some clear answers. So well, what do look, you say? The clear answers are that, that both major parties have got a target called zero. Zero by 2050. This guy's got a wrecking ball. He's sitting on a wrecking ball. The guy down the end is also sitting on a wrecking ball. And the wrecking ball is the jobs of the hunter. Now, James, you got your numbers wrong. The effect of the hunter is 75,000 people in lost jobs. Not 15 coal mines, mate. 
not the number of people you're talking about. You're nowhere near it. And James, uh, Dan, Chris Bowen's just said to us on TV, live TV, that there will be a carbon tax on coal mines in the Hunter. Now, Dan's not, a can Dan's not an MP yet, mm. but that guy is. So who am I going to believe? Who are the people in the Hunter going to believe? The facts are, I'm not going to walk around the truth. The truth is that the people in the Hunter and the future of the Hunter is that threat with these two major parties, zero emission targets. The taxes, the jobs, the industry. I've been in this Hunter all my life and I've seen what downturns in the Hunter from, from bad coal prices can cause to the employment and the businesses of Hunter. These guys, Dan, you're a wrecking ball speaker, mate, but James, you're on a wrecking ball too. So the reason I'm fighting, the reason I'm running for One Nation, and One Nation, Pauline Hanson, if I'm elected, we'll go to Canberra and we'll fight for those jobs and, we'll get, and we will fight and we'll make an investigation okay. into this climate-crazy policy that we are getting hit with in Australia and the rest of the world are laughing at us. OK, I'm reluctant to move off this debate, but let's have one more crack. James, Dan, what is the difference between your net zero uh, policies, beside the, the round figure itself? You're both moving in the same direction, aren't you? James, first to you. <clears throat> no, well, not at all. Uh, the National Party have a plan for the future of this region, and we support the families that rely on coal mining. We are not putting a tax on 15 businesses in the Hunter who do employ 10,000 people directly, those 15 mines that are impacted by the Labor Party's policy. Go to their website. It's in the policy documentation. I'm not making anything up. But the Nationals, we have a plan. We support people that work in that industry, but we've invested over $22 billion into new technologies. We've invested at the Port of Newcastle, $80 million for hydrogen hubs there. That's another, not supporting another coal 100... jobs. That's Dale, not supporting I didn't, coal I didn't, jobs. Dale, I didn't That's interrupt not supporting you. Coal jobs. I didn't interrupt you. That's a dream, mate. That's a dream no. that you got in your parliament. We're, we're supporting coal jobs, but we also support diversifying our economy. In our plan, we want to double the tourism in the Hunter region. We want to see hydrogen become another industry where people can get the same paying job in another industry. We're backing our agriculture sector. We're supporting our defence industry in the Singleton Army base, <laughs> manufacturing. The hunter has a bright future. One person's job in a new industry doesn't mean that somebody else's job in another industry has to come at its expense. And that's the difference between us and the Labor Party. <laughs> They're wanting to implement a carbon tax on your mining jobs, we're wanting to grow the economy because we know that a strong economy is good for families in our region. Let's be completely honest here then, Dan. Will you do this? Will you? Is what you're saying today here that you are looking at the slow demise of coal and Labor wants to manage that? Well, if people want to buy our coal, we will sell them our coal. There's no doubt about it. The coal mining industry is as strong as it's ever been right now. The only thing that will dictate what happens to the coal mining industry is the export market. They will dictate that. That will be made in boardrooms overseas. That will be not made by any government here in Australia ever because while people don't buy our coal, we will sell them our coal. That creates good, safe, secure employment all the way along the area here. So, and what we need to continue to do yeah. is move forward and diversify our region, bring manufacturing back. We know that renewables are coming in this, into this area. Yeah. We've already had $4 billion put into the red zone here between Central Coast and Hunter. We've had that put in by the private sector. The private sector will push whatever they need to push into the Hunter, and that will create thousands and thousands of jobs for our area. Also, we've got the best wines in Australia here. We've got the second best tourism in New South Wales, the best energy sector, the best resource sector in New South Wales, and not to mention the world's, some of the world's fan, most fantastic horse studs and most revered ones in the world here in the Hunter. Mm. That's what Labor's going to fight for, and Labor's going to support those, all those industries going forward in getting <coughs> to net zero by 2050. We have the plan to do it, yeah. and we will move forward so with that plan. So as you move to net zero, though, these mines become more trade-reliant, do they not? So then the safeguard mechanism kicks in. Mines are reliant Does it on... Not? Mines are reliant on... Customers. ...people buying our coal. Exactly. As I said earlier, we've So these we've mines in the meet... Hunter are going to become more trade-reliant well, as we move well, to we net zero in this country. We are using our coal, Dan. We, we are using our coal until 2047. Why don't we burn the coal, Dan? Why don't we burn the coal in Australia 
at Japan are building high energy, low emission power stations. Dale, they're the buying the coal sector. out of Australia. They're buying the coal out of Australia at eight percent ash. We're shoving into our power stations in Australia coal at thirty two percent ash. So I'm not going to stand here and be told we we need renewables when we're not building and managing our coal fired power stations to the standard that Japan are delivering power for their country with clean coal out of Australia. Dale, at the end of the day, the private sector will decide that. That won't be up to the government to decide that. All the government will do, well, that will the be the state government. Well, the government. The state government, the state government, government, the state the government, government will everything. be the ones to yeah. make the decision. If it stacks up, the state government will say yes to it. If it doesn't no, stack up, then they won't. Yeah, yeah, but, but this, yeah, this is a state issue, though. Is well, this isn't a, this isn't a well, federal you're, issue you're, because you've it has to go through state planning. You've got a zero target. You've got a zero target. And you're going to and you're going to wipe out the hunter and the miners' jobs. And, and that's your opinion. Now, you're worried though. about. You're worried about. You're worried about Independent studies jobs. on this. You're worried about jobs, the casualisation jobs. Yep. Well, I'm sorry, mate. If your policies come in and you're going to hit us with the targets that you're hitting under Labor and under Liberal Nationals, there won't be any jobs. You just brought so it up, though. You guys voted in government. government. In no, no, Parliament, no, no, no. you voted in Parliament against same job, same pay. Mate, you voted against these coal miners that you no, say are the best thing ever here, no, which no, they no, are the best thing. No, let's your, just bring this back, back a bit. I'm supporting, I'm supporting coal. Both these parties did that. I want to support coal-fired power stations. But your party doesn't sure. support coal. Oh, because they don't know so, yes, we do support why coal. Why are you so You've got people helping. in national... You've got Labor people that's on TV. You've got... And you've got the Greens. You're preferencing the Greens. And what has the Greens said? Tomorrow, if we get the balance of power... We will shut down gas and coal projects and any future Is coal projects. Is that true, Jenny? Are you preferencing, preferencing the Greens I'm preferencing an independent. I'm preferencing an independent. Where are the yeah. Greens on the ballot? The, the Greens, greens on the my ballot. Uh, they're at the bottom four, the bottom five, because honestly, the bottom five to me... They're at number are four. All, yeah, the bottom five, I said. There's nine if candidates. You do, if you do your maths... Well, I, do, I am doing five, my maths. The bottom five, the bottom five, so that's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So that's the bottom five. That equals nine, if you add four on top of that. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Glad that we can all count to ten or nine. It's a here. nice way of saying that they are preferencing the Greens. No, we're not preferencing the Greens at all. <laughs> and what I am and a, Labor, a Labor Greens alliance won't be good for the hunter. But can, can we just can we be well, civil, can we be civil for a minute? I don't support mining equipment, do I? I don't support mining jobs. But you know what I do for a living? I build underground mining equipment. I don't support mining Okay, so jobs. you've got a vested interest here. Let me talk to you about equipment. that. Let I me talk to you about equipment. that, Dale. I've so worked in the mines since I was 18 years of age. Yeah. And I don't support mining. My family all work in the mines. Well, I think we're pretty clear that you do support mines. I support actually. mines, and so does One Nation. And so does One let's... Nation produce support coal. And so does One Nation support building coal fired power stations. Well, let's look to the future. They're the two parties let's, that let's don't support the coal. If standing you transition, right there. Why are you so blinkered on coal? If it was net net on jobs and renewables were cheaper and more reliable, why wouldn't you support that? Well, I support what Australia can build. So why are we so concerned we're, we're, about... We're still pretty good at renewables. Well, I can tell you that the windmills and the solar panels that they want to put over Australia are not made in Australia. Mm. So ask the two major parties, where are they going to get their solar panels from and where are they going to get their windmills from? Well, you're not talking about manufacturing, so do you want to talk about that? Manufacturing. We need, we're, not going to, we're not going to grow manufacturing unless we've got energy. We can't run modern, computerised manufacturing equipment if we haven't got reliable power. Mm. We can't build anything at all if we're going to have remitting power. Melbourne and Victoria, they're getting blackouts. We all know that people that work in the, in the energy sector, employees that are scared to say much, know when Liddell closes, the hunter will get blackouts. The hunter okay. will get brownouts. Why are any of you talking about nuclear, by the way? Well, well, well the, Na the National Party are the only party that want to have a discussion about it. Discussion? That's not true. But you're, you've, so been power, you've been in power, you've power for a analyst. decade. So, so what have you done about it? the National it? Party, we're our own party, uh, unlike the Labor Greens Alliance, we won't go there, but the National Party want to have a discussion about that. And, it, and like I tried to say before, before Dale interrupted, the problem with the Labor Greens Alliance, the problem with One Nation, they want to fight about things. We need a vision for the future of our region, and that's why the Nationals have got a $1.3 billion package as a part of the recent budget for the Hunter. 
That's on top of investing $600 million into the Curry Curry gas-fired power station. That's on top of the investments that we've made in previous budgets into the Hunter region, over $4 billion in infrastructure directly into the Hunter region. The Nationals have a plan for our future to support existing industries, to grow our economy, diversify our region, to support families in Lake Macquarie, to support the blue-collar workers in the Hunter Valley. We have a plan and a vision, and all we're getting from the other parties is infighting and, green, and deals with the Greens, Dan. So straight up, I'll come back on this one, because Labor is its own party. We have its own policies, and we have, at the end of the day, we have already said, Anthony Albanese has said online and said in, in many, many articles, many, many times, that we will form government on our own right. That is what has been that said. That may not be your choice, Dan. Yep, so, well... That is what he said. So I can only take him on face value, the same as you could, no, but, the voters could take me on face value. But you know how the parliamentary system works. Yeah, I do. And yeah, you know how yeah. the teal independents yeah. work. You know they work, what right. they want on climate. So you're yeah. saying here that Anthony Albanese has told you that he wouldn't negotiate to form government? All Anthony Albanese has said, and he said it everywhere, mm. is that we want to form government on our own. And sure. if we do the right thing, we will does. form government on our own. Everyone does, so but it's unlike, not always possible. unlike James and his party here, he says they're only the Nationals are the only ones. Unfortunately, their leader and there's two different leaders of the parties there. Is that right? So, are, the, so are, you <coughs> saying that, are you saying that you guys are the only ones that get to make the call so the Liberal government doesn't have a choice on I'm it? I'm saying on nuclear energy. Okay. Is the Labor Party willing to have a discussion in Parliament on nuclear energy? I'll be honest straight here right now and say I don't know because that hasn't so come up in the conversation. So you don't know the Labor Party's policy on nuclear energy? Well, we don't know either, James. Yeah, we, we don't, don't know, know what's James. in the Nationals' so, yeah. coalition well, Laura, agreement, to be honest. Would you like to see well, that? Well, the National Party Would policies... Would you like to tell us what it is? The National Party policies are all on our website. Uh, no, we're, but we we're don't know what the coalition well, well, agreement is. Do you, you want to know ours? So we're, what is the, we what don't is know what the coalition agreement is. We're talking about is. nuclear energy here and the only party willing to have a discussion with the Australian people. At the That's end of the true, day... That's not true, At the end of the one day... Nation want to go, one of the one major nation parties saying, if you, want, if, you really want to, if you really want to go and let's keep our coal-fired power stations going, let's keep them going, let's improve them, let's burn clean coal that we can produce in Australia. And then what we do next is, if we're really serious about getting net zero emissions, let's build nuclear coal, okay. uh, nuclear power stations. That <laughs> is the only way, if we are serious about, if, we are, if these major parties are serious about net zero emissions, let's keep burning clean coal produced in Australia and build nuclear power stations. That is the only way and the best way for our agricultural industry, our people, our rural people, are absolutely sick to death of being told that they're going to get wind turbines on their ranges, sure. solar panels across their beautiful alluvial soils. So if we're very serious about having getting to net zero emissions, yeah. let's continue our coal, burn clean coal, improve our power stations, and let's okay. develop and build nuclear coal-fired power stations, and we'll have clean zero emissions that these two parties are uh, okay. of zero targets. Loud and clear, Dale. And Let's clear. get to the cost James of living. James and Dale, J James has been saying that they're putting, they're putting billions and billions of dollars in infrastructure over the last 10 years. So where is our promised Singleton Bypass? Where is our promised Musselbrook Bypass? So our miners can get home to their families safer well, and what quicker I... because they're working 12 and a half hour shifts I'm happy to every answer day. Question. Yeah, well, I haven't finished my question, James. Okay, sure. So you're asking you let me you... finish. So okay. They're working 12 and a half hour shifts every day. They've been promised for the last 10 years on every election, every state, every federal election, that they're going to get a bypass. And apparently you're saying that dirt's going to be turned by the end of the year. Is that correct, James? Well, I think, I think what Dan's forgetting is we've had a Labor representative for over 100 years. But the Labor years. representative doesn't and matter here, James, the job, because... The job of a representative... It doesn't matter because we haven't been in government to make that happen. We, it's like going to Grandma and asking for a chocolate so biscuit. Let, so let me be clear. So jo Joel has fought hard to try and get a bypass, but has got nowhere, unfortunately, with the government that you want to so represent. Let, so let me be clear. Um, if you were to be elected and not in government, are you just yep. going to sit down in your chair and not advocate no, for anything? No, certainly not. I'll be advocating for everything for this area so because I on. care Has about Anthony this Anthony made this an election promise, the no. bypass? We haven't made any promises on this right. yet because we're so sick of promising. They don't we're have a plan. Hang on. But, but, we're sick of promising But Anthony Albanese could with. be Prime Minister and you yeah. haven't been able to convince him to commit to this bypass? We've spoken about this bypass right. and we will follow. If, if it's in the budget already, so it will be getting elected, done. If we'll, it's in the we'll budget like, already, we'll, we'll your it'll be getting done. Get it. If it's in the budget already, we'll be looking at it and talking to our state government counterparts trying to get it along the line. Right. These okay. guys are saying there's going to be dirt turned this year, but... Quickly, There's James, not going to be dirt. Yeah, we get to cost it's of been living. promised. We need one to minute about the cost of living. It's been promised 
every every election this has been promised. One minute he says that we're not doing it, then he starts to defend it by saying, well, we don't need to commit to it because it's already in the budget. We know what we've done. The $560 million Singleton bypass is coming to the people of the Hunter because of the Nationals in government. When's the it coming? When's it coming? The 268... You can go to the website and look, but it's, the construction starts next year. Uh, the Musselbrook bypass... $268 million under the okay. Labor Party has never been funded. No promise or commitment from Albanese or Dan on the Musselbrook bypass. <coughs> but the Nationals in government, we are delivering the big picture infrastructure for this region. You know why? Because our kids and our grandkids deserve a right. future but in James, this region. How, James, how many times can you promise something before it's a fake promise? I thought you just it's said that promised, it's in the it's budget. Prom yeah, it's been your budget for the last three elections and it's never happened. It has never been done, and it's been there. It has never been done. So where does that money go? Yeah. And not no, to mention, they've just put $9 actually, million dollars in. Actually, I'm going to jump in here. Yeah. I want to get on to the cost of living because this is at the yeah. top of people's minds. It's the first thing that they look at when they turn on the news this morning of all mornings. Dale, I want to talk to you can about you losing... Can I just let me about? Yep, but let, just let me get this question yep. out, right? Yep. So you've lost a bit of skin from One Nation supporters because you sided with the Coalition on a deal when it comes to casual, casual workers in the mines. Are you willing to say anything about that today? Do you want to rectify that? What's the deal? Well, the deal on that is that people need to read, really read into what come out of that. And what come out of that, that deal was that the, the sign-off by One Nation and the Nationals mm. was about a policy that was a good policy and all the all the all the Labor Party has done. If predecessor done, doesn't think if so. If it was a good policy, then why didn't it get signed well, up, Dan well, Dale? Why didn't it get agreed upon? The, the, same the, job, same pay is a great policy because it gets two hundred and thirty six more million dollars into our region that we're losing well, currently again, through this, this government. This was a policy before that I was running in federal election. Could I but speak the, to the policy? The, can I yeah, you ask me the down. question? Yep. Yeah, no, you're the right. The facts down. are that, that the real facts are that people really want to look into it. The Labor Party and the CFMEU have done a very good job. Of, put, of printing the small bits of that of that policy that they want to see people read, but if people want to take their time and like say take their time and really investigate what that what that vote was about, they'll understand why. And mm. it's not about not supporting permanent jobs. So I would say that if they look at Malcolm Roberts and what Malcolm Roberts has put out in the last few weeks, then ask me again what we believe and what what casualisation and permanent jobs mean to us. Yeah. At the end but of the day, Dale, refunding? you guys... What about refunding um, the award, uh, the wages, the lost wages that some of these mine workers claim that they weren't because they were kept as casuals? Is that, yeah. That's what the unions seem that's to... That's what the unions want. were fighting for. Yeah. They were fighting to so get that is back. Is that what and you're fighting for as well? We're fighting to bring in same jobs, same pay laws into legislation so that these two... This, this government is a government of low income... Mm -hmm and stagnant, stagnant wages and insecure work. That is what they want. That is what they want everyone to be. They want everyone to be casual workers. We want full-time employment for people yeah. in our region so they know they've got safe, secure I'm jobs. I'm asking about the retrospective payment. The retrospective payment, we haven't spoken about that because all we want to do first is get in same job, same pay laws so people who are continually getting left behind working... I used to work at Mount Thorley Walkworth. I had people working next to me earning $40,000 less than I was for doing the exact same job. They couldn't call up safety issues because they were scared, because they have a carrot dangled in front of them their whole working life that they think they're going to get a permanent job. They can't take long to have a meal break. They can't take long to go to the toilet. Everything is judged on these people because, okay. unfortunately, same job, same pay laws aren't in and these people are losing millions and millions of dollars to this area every year. $236 million we're losing per year out of our region. Imagine what that can do for our bars here, our restaurants, yeah. our, our shops, everything along this area. Imagine what that can do. But these two, these two parties voted against it through the parliament. So at the end of the day, read, it was just about the through, but policy. they voted read. against it. Do you, do you investigate? Oh, I'm, I'm, happy to explain, I'm happy to explain the policy to people watching because they deserve to know what the okay. policy is. We introduced legislation that I'm actually proud of because it's the first government in history that has introduced laws that allow casual workers to convert into permanent full-time work within 12 months. Now, when it comes to same job, same pay, we support that. And the question that Laura asked was... Does Dan want historical retrospective provisions in the bill? So it's all one, one... You can throw a slogan out there, but what that legislation that Dan's saying he supports means that little cafes, 
hospitality venues, pubs, tourism operators in this yeah. electorate would have had to have gone and back paid their casual staff sick pay no, and then your leave pay. That's right. what, that is All not right. true, Time James. is getting away from us. We want to, I want to talk about some really important issues in this electorate, and that is skills and labour shortages. I want quick answers uh, from all of you, if we can. Still keep that fiery debate, of course. Now, Dan, first to you, what are you going to do about getting more workers to this region? So we've got 465,000 free TAFE positions. An extra 20,000 university right positions. That's it's in not the pipeline, right but we've it's got what, to start, what about We've got to start right somewhere. It's not right now, but we've got to start somewhere. This brings apprentices back, because apprentices are what we've lost under this government. We've lost more apprentices now than ever before. They'll spare it off saying they've got the biggest numbers they've ever had, mm -hmm. and sure they may do in their government, but we're miles off where we used to be. We used to have great manufacturing here, which they'd have 100 apprentices on, on the go at any one stage. Unfortunately, now this government has let that slide away. All right. So Labor, Labor will fix that by bringing in more apprentices so that our trade sector can prosper into the future. Is anyone willing to talk about overseas migrants? We need well, to bring back... What we need to do, Laura, we need to give the people back their jobs that the premiers and states have been sacking. Okay. We've, got still teach we've got school teachers, we've got fireys, we've got nurses, we've got people... Are you talking because about the vaccine they're... mandates? Yes. That's not going to fill the, the shortages, though, is but, it? So what but, about... Be willing to talk about migrants, getting more migrants here to fill some of these let's jobs. Give our own, let's get our own people back to work. OK. Let's get the people that have been put out of work because of mandates and their freedom of choice taken away from them. Hmm. So before we bring anybody into the country, let's look after our own people first, and that is to get the people that the premiers have sacked during this COVID... Um, OK. ..debacle. All right, James, what about Can overseas answer, workers yeah, filling I'll some of the gaps? Quickly. Yes, we've been through COVID pandemic the last few years and every Australian and people here in the Hunter, it has been tough, uh, like all around the world, but we've fared very well and we've got a record number of trades and apprentices, 220,000 under our Boosting Apprenticeships Commencement Program. Uh, yes, we need more and that's why our government is committed to doing it and in the recent budget, uh, another 35,000 uh, were, were accounted for. And okay. Laura, you mentioned cost of living. People are doing it tough. And that's why, as a part of the budget, we introduce me measures to ease the cost of living for people. That expire the, pretty soon. The $420 cost of living payment uh, for low- and middle-income tax earners, $1,500 for every individual, $3,000 for a couple. We've got more affordable childcare. My wife's an early learning teacher, and I've got two young kids in childcare. For our second child... You must love Labor's policy, For our then. second child. No, well, I, I like our policy, because we've actually done it. Because they're the going problem, backwards, The problem, the going problem with the Labor policy. Party... There's conflicts between Chris Bowen, Tanya Plibersek, Penny Wong, Dan. They can't agree on what their policies are. And they're, they're on major... Childcare. I Pardon? Think, uh, on childcare, they well, can't agree. Well, so far we've had same pay, same work legislation that Dan it's doesn't know his party pay, same po job. policy. We've had... We've had um, at, at each point today, mm -hmm. Dan not able to explain his party's policies. Yep. And what we need in The Hunter is we need a federal member who goes in to fight for families and to reduce their cost of living. We're doing it. We've got a plan for the future and we've got a track record with a strong economy making the cost of living more affordable for families because that's the support they need right now. OK. Let's... Labor is, Labor is fighting for families here. We are fighting. This government says there's 220,000 apprentices. It's 10 years too late. We, we have a sure. skills shortage here because of, it's 10 years too late to bring in apprentices. What happened to that... Ages ago. Where was it then, James? It's too late now. That's why we've got a skills shortage right now. What but... about the poor relationship this government has with China? That's affecting wineries in this region. Certainly now, is. What's to be done about that? Well, you know, um, what can be done about that? Well, what's happened... Why have we got bad relationships with China? Well, what we've done with China is that everything, everything that the Australian governments, the major parties have owned, they've stuck a poor sale sign on it. They've sold our power... They've sold our ports. Just name anything that's Australians own, that Australian people own, our energy. Now, what is the strongest thing that Australia needs? We need energy and we need independence. Yeah. So Australia and the major parties have got ourselves into, into a mess of China and I hope that we can get out of it. For example, when the Labor Party was in, like with China, and we're concerned about China as, as being close to us and being on Solomon Islands, the mm -hmm. Labor Party... When they were in, they spent 1.5% of GDP on defence. Mr Dutton 
is proposing to spend 2.2%. One nation would love to spend 5% of GDP on defence. So that's what we want to do. And now if the Labor, preference in the Greens, mm. but we know the Greens' policy is, if they get in and control balance of power, they want to t cut defence by 50%. Mm. So, you know, let's, um, let's, stop, let's stop poking the panda in the belly and get our own backyard in order and, and, and manage our own and just worry about our own people yeah. and our independence and our energy and stand on our own two feet. Because what Australia's done, and done very easily, is everything that they own, it becomes too hard. And as major parties, as major parties have proven, they can't manage anything. They can't manage industry. Mm. They can't manage anything that, that takes a bit, little bit of um, common sense. Yep. It's easy to put a for sale sign up in front of our power stations, our power poles, our water. They sell everything that we've bloody owned. And it's crazy. Well, the Port of Darwin got sold off by this government. What about the Port of Newcastle? Port of Newcastle, once again, sold off by this government. Half. And they, or half, sorry. Half of it got sold off by this government. And now they've been asleep at the wheel again. What's the problem there, though? Does it have an effect on the region? Everyone's talking about safety of our region. We should be owning our own ports. We have great ports here. We have great shipping here. We should be owning okay. our own. They've been asleep at the wheel in the Solomon Islands again, mm. and now China has gone into well, there, which a, is OK. Which they've been asleep James, there. the PM still hasn't spoken to the Solomon Islands leader. I mean, it's a couple of weeks now. You'd expect he would have, wouldn't well, you? Well, we ta when it comes to matters of security, uh, we take advice from our security agencies. And can I say that when we came to government, defence spending was at a low, and we've increased that um, because we want to see a strong defence of our nation. And locally, we've got the Singleton Army Base and we've got the RAF Base, Williamtown... Obviously, we've seen investments in the F-35s and I'd like mm. to see defence industry in the Hunter grow and continue to employ more people. Uh, I know who I'd rather have as my defence minister, Peter Dutton or Brendan O'Connor. Sure. Would you rather Maurice Payne as your foreign minister or Penny Wong? All right. I, know, I know who's Payne. best. No, I, know, I, know where Maurice Payne was. I know where Maurice Payne was when, yeah. when uh, the Solomon Islands deal was. They sent their B-grade team, their reserve-grade team over <laughs> to talk about, discuss it, right. while Maurice It'll Payne was to, at a fundraiser for your You'll have to save it to party. your last 30 seconds, which I definitely won't interrupt you for. You'll all get that. Before I let you go, it's one thing I am an expert on, and that is being a woman. I'd like to, you to define, Dale, first to you, what is a woman? I'm looking at one right now. And <laughs> you're looking that. at a man. Dan? A woman is the exact same as everybody else. We're all people here at the end of the day. I've got two fantastic daughters and I've got a great wife in my life and I will continue to support them going forward. James, you've had a bit of time to think about it. The Oxford Dictionary defines it really well, Laura. Uh, this is not complicated and in the words of the Prime Minister, it's common sense. OK. 30 seconds. Dale? <coughs> Well, um, as your One Nation candidate, again, representing the Hunter, I'll be fighting and I'll be a loud voice for the people of the Hunter. And I'll fight against these two major parties, net zero emission targets, that they are going to enforce on the Hunter. Either way, these two guys are sitting on wrecking balls. And they are zero targets, zero emission targets for the Hunter. So the coal mine industry, taxes and jobs and businesses, we're going to lose them. Okay. So I want the people of the Hunter to think. Yep. Think about what you're going to get from this net zero emission, but stop and think now, people of the Hunter, what are we going to lose? All right. I know what we're going to lose. Jobs, jobs and jobs. Dan. So James is next. Sorry, James. <laughs> Very good. The Hunter has a great future. And as somebody with a young family, I'll represent you whether you live in Musselbrook, Singleton, Cessnock, Cameron Park, Morissette and everywhere in between because our region does have a bright future. We've got a plan with a $1.3 billion package for the Hunter region. It's locked and loaded in the budget because we believe in the people of the Hunter region. We want a strong and secure future for our children and our grandchildren where they can land their dream job right here in the Hunter. Dan. At the end of the day, the voters will make the choice. You can have a PR spin doctor like we have here with James and Scott Morrison, or you can have someone like me, a blue-collar worker, someone who's worked in mining, energy, engineering, manufacturing. I'm a five-time Olympian. I know what it is to stand up and represent your country, and it's an amazing feeling. And I can't wait to stand up for the hunter and fight for it and make us a champion area again like we already are.
Dan Rapacoli, we thank you for your time. James Thompson, thank Dale McMurray, it you, has Laura. been 45 thank minutes of promise fiery debate. We thank, <laughs> thank you for that. And thank and you to viewers. Thank you. And thank you <laughs> for viewers, watching cheers. at home. Thank Don't you. forget, this is a seat on a margin of 3%. It is anyone's Thanks, seat at this election. Stay tuned. We'll be back James. in a moment. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Dale.